Alrighty guys, it is the Def King here, back with another video. Now I know it's been ages, alright, roast me in the comment section below. Um, I should get roasted, I deserve it. It's been like a month, and I have no excuse, I'm sorry. But, um, anyways, good news is I'm back. But, I'm going to be teaching you guys about data stores today, and um, they are very exciting, because this is honestly like one of the last things you need to make a fully functioning game. So, yeah. Um, obviously, we'll have some more tutorials in the advanced series, but um, after that, we're going to have our GUI series and stuff like that, and then we're going to make an entire game together. So, yeah, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that in the future. Anyways, um, so what are data stores? If you guys don't know, data stores are basically like... Um, you know you have like a leader stats, right? You should have watched my basic um, beginner's tutorial if you haven't, links in the description. But you know you have like leader stats, right? So you do like players dot player added, blah, 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 blah. Okay, <laughs> that looks so bad, but you know what I'm talking about. And then you do like local leader stats equals game or equals uh, instance dot new. And then basically what it, ha what it has is your things up there in the top right. So it'll show the leaderboard in the top right. But that's what we're going to do. But, in, um, but what we're going to do is actually save the data. Okay, so after you leave and when you join the game back, you're actually still going to have your data. And it's not just new, new wiped everything. Okay, you actually get to save some data. So it's very cool. And. And um, obviously, you're going to use it in like, any game you ever make, probably. So, yeah. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started in the tutorial. Now, before we start, guys, I just want to say it does get a little confusing. So, if you do get confused, um, be sure to just rewatch the video. And I also will have a link to maybe the dev forum or, uh, or not a dev forum, but like a, a Roblox blog post. Okay. <laughs> a Roblox blog post. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, so what I'm going to do is. Yeah, I'll link that below, and if, if you get confused, I would recommend checking that out. Anyway, sorry about that interruption. Okay, so let's go ahead and insert our script. Uh, here we go. So now, first things first, we need to get the data store service. Data store is its own service, so we're going to go ahead and define it in a variable called data store service. All right, and simple as that. We're going to go ahead and do game colon get service, data store service. Boom. All right, look, data store service now. All right, so now that's your data store service. So now, like, you know you have, like, user input service, right? Now we have that, okay, but now we actually need to make a data store. So we're going to make our first data store, and we're going to call it data, or data store 1, okay? So this is our first data store. And if we ever want to get just a completely new slate, we would just change this to 2. Well, actually, we wouldn't. We, we, this gets to the same. Um, but... Basically, uh, I'll show you. Actually, we'll, we'll name this my data store just to keep it simple. All right, so my data store, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and do equals data store service. So we're going to make a variable called my data store. And then we're going to use the data store service. And then we're going to do get data store. Um, now, what get data store is, basically, you're going to do colon get data store. What this is, is you're basically getting a data store. So what does that mean? That means like, here, how do I put it? I'm sorry. This confused me at first too, so I'm trying to make sure it doesn't confuse you guys. But basically, what it means is you're you're getting a data store, okay? And the data store you're you're making is under the name my data store, just like this, right? Now, if I did my data store one, or if I just did data store, and then I did it, and then like okay, one day I did data store, right? And then and then I was like, you know what? I don't want this data anymore. And then I did data store one. I would have entire new data. The all the data would be saved in data store one under your game. Now, actually, um, before we do this, we actually need to set up something real quick. So if you are in Roblox, right, and you don't have your game published, what you need to do, you see here, if you go into game settings and options, you need to actually enable studio access to API services, which basically means like you need to enable this so you can have data stores. You see, it says that right there. So the reason why is because like. You know it's saving data and it wants to have like a game to save it to so when you actually publish the game um, and do that so I have a big blank base play but I'll go ahead and just publish it to Roblox and um, I don't want to make sure I don't okay okay just hit new place all right um, <laughs> there you go hit new place and then um, you're gonna go ahead and just name it whatever you want so we'll name it uh, tutorial and then we can go ahead and just hit create place you don't do anything else um, but there we go. Now it's making our game, and boom, anyone can play it in the world if they want to. That's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, so we have this right here. Okay, so now we published our game. Now we need to go into our game settings over here, okay, and then go to options and then enable studio or access to game services. 
Um, so yeah, basically we need to publish this so that way the Roblox knows what game to save the data store to. So yeah, that makes sense, right? Hopefully. All right, anyways, so uh, what we did so far, data store service, right? We got the data store service, that's all we did. And then we made it a data store. We, we just made our own data store. And this data store is called my data store, okay? So yeah, if you ever wanna change it, you can just make a new data store and call it data store one or whatever you wanna call it. You can, this can be whatever you want. This can be cheese, okay? If you, you can have a data store named cheese. Now, normally we keep these the same, but obviously they don't have to be. But um, no, we're gonna make our data store my data store, all right? Um, anyways, so next. Next is where we actually do the fun stuff. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go ahead, oh, jeez, we're gonna go ahead and make our leader stats, all right, just simple leader stats. So we're gonna do game.players.playerAdded, connect, function, player, um, and then we're gonna go ahead and, oh, oh, oop, I made an oopsie, I made an oopsie. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and do local leader stats equals instance.new. You should know how to do this already um, if you don't. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just making a leader stats. So that way, um, whenever you join the game, it's going to create um, a value called leader stats or a folder, and that's gonna put it inside of your character, right? And then that way, any data you have in your leader stats, right? Um, we can save. So we're gonna go ahead and make an, another variable uh, called, uh, we'll make an int value to put in our leader stats. So we'll call it local cache, okay? And then we'll do instance.new um, int value, okay? Because it's an int value. And then we're gonna do cache.name equals cache, obviously. And then uh, cache.parent equals leader stats, all right? Uh, also, if you don't know what this means, you guys really should watch my beginner tutorial. Beginner's tutorial. Um, I have an entire series if you're if you're new to scripting, so you can learn everything and uh, you'll be caught up. Anyways, um, so yeah, but what we did so far, we just made our leader stats, okay, and then we put it. We're, we're making a variable when the player joins called cash, and then we're gonna put it in the leader stats so it can display. So I'll go ahead and hit play, and all we did, as you can see up here is oh, look at that star boys oh look at that star um if you guys don't know i have another youtube channel called tap water um it's more like entertainment stuff so yeah um but i have a hundred thousand subscribers on that channel so um i have the star i got in the star program it's pretty cool anyways um so yeah as you can see there it says um cash zero right so that's what we just did we made our leader stats and then we put cash into it all right so now what we want to do is go ahead and actually save it or load the data in. So when a player first joins, what we want to do is when we first want to check, we want to be like, okay, has this player played our game before? If he has, well then we want to give him his data back, right? We want to load his data for him. But if he hasn't, well then we'll just we'll just let him play the game and then we'll save it once um you know we need to save it. And then next time he joins we can load this data in. Okay? Hope that makes sense. Um anyways, so what we're gonna do is we need to actually have a um a like a place to save the data okay now you could just save the data right under your player's name so you could do local player or you, you already have it right here right you have player so you could do local uh, okay i want to put this okay listen so listen we need to have an id to save it to right so we could just save it under the id of the player's name so we could do local id equals um player dot name right now we could do that and that's the id we save it to but we don't want to save it to the player's name because if the player changes their name they're going to lose all their data so what you need to do is actually do player dot user id all right now you could just save it under player dot user id but also you don't want to just save it under a bunch of random numbers so what people normally do is you just concatenate it with player underscore dot dot player dot user id so now if i go ahead and print um, the ID I'll show you what it looks like now basically it's just gonna look like this right so you're gonna save your data under this key right here okay so it's gonna be your it's gonna be player underscore for everyone and then it's gonna be your ID now if you're wondering what your ID is it's basically if you go in your Roblox profile on the website you can look at the top and then it's like a bunch of numbers and that's like a link to your profile so yeah that's how you can get your own ID if you want to know that um, but yeah, and everyone has their own custom ID and it doesn't change at all. So even if you change your username, your ID will stay the same. So that's good, that's what we want. But um, we're gonna go ahead and name this to, we'll rename our ID variable to player user ID because it's a lot more simpler to understand. So um, player user ID, yeah, okay. Uh, anyways, so next we're gonna go ahead and start seeing if the player has data. So if the player did have data, what we wanna do is we want to, first of all, 
um, how we would load it in, right, is we would do my data store, get async, get async. Okay, now this is the function right here that you need to know. Get async. It means get async. Okay, so as, like a sync it, sync the data to what we have in our data store. Okay, so we're syncing it, and then we need to know. Okay, well, who do we, whose data do we look to sync to it? Now, okay, <laughs> this might sound a bit confusing. I'm sorry if it does, um, but hope this makes sense. Okay, so okay, okay, all right. So yeah, you need to save. You need to get the data from a player. Okay, so now we're gonna do um, player user. Oh crap! So you get a sync player user ID. Now you, you think that you would just go ahead and do okay. Well, get it a sync, a sync it up with the player ID. That way you know who to load it to. Um, and then you're good, right? Well, no, you're not good, okay? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put load data just to get confused. Um, but actually, what you should be doing is wrapping this in a P call. Now, you probably don't know, you probably don't know what a P call is. And a P call, all it is, is it basically just protects you from getting errors and um, breaking your script, right? So what we're gonna do is actually write a function around our little thing right here. And we're gonna do just this, type this, right? Local success, comma, error message, equals p call function and then you have end right here right now basically what this is saying is that it's saying okay well if it's success then set it equal to this p call function if there's an error it's going to return an error okay and then also what you're doing is you're you're um getting this async but you actually need to make sure you put your data somewhere because you need to you need to actually have your data to sync it up what you're doing right now is you're just getting your data to sync so actually you need to have a variable that you assign this get async to so yeah, so what we're gonna name it is we're gonna name it data, okay? So we're gonna name our variable that that we have saved. Um, basically all our data that we have from the player, from the data store, we're gonna name it data. All right, simple enough, right? So local data is equal to my data store, get async, and the player user ID. So basically we're getting, every time a player joins the server, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find out if they played the game. So if they have, then it's gonna get data, okay? Um, and then if they have it, then then it just won't even it won't even have this problem. Okay, so yeah, okay, so yeah, it's gonna it's gonna set the data equal to, um, you know what the data what the data store has. All right, hope that makes sense. Um, if it doesn't make sense, just keep watching. When maybe the saving will make you understand it better. So um, now there's a problem, right? Um, this this right here, you see how it says local data? Actually, okay, never mind. Forget that for a second. Let me just go ahead and do this. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do if success. So if success equals true, or if it, it returns a value, well, if so basically if this p call is successful and we didn't get an error or anything and it's all worked out good, right? We're gonna do if success then perfect, right? And now what we're gonna do is actually load our data in here. Now we don't have, I didn't show you what we saved yet, so I'm not gonna load it in there, but um, that's where we would load the data. So this is where we would actually, or not load the data, but this is where we would set our data equal to the current cache, okay? So you see how we have cache in here? Right now cache is, the value is nothing because it doesn't know what to set it to, but it's gonna look in our data store and get it from there. But we need to actually save data first if we wanna load data, so we're gonna do that. I probably should have showed you saving data first, but whatever um but also another problem is right if you guys remember um this is actually a little bit of advanced um, so you maybe you might have forgot but don't worry because it's a lot of people forget but basically um if you look in here right what you would do is actually um set your cache dot value right when you whenever you have your data you would set your cache dot value so this thing right here equal to your data um Right, so that's what you do. But you see, we have an error right here. Okay, so you're setting your cache dot value equal to what you have in data. But you see, we have an error. It says unknown global data. Well, it actually doesn't know what data is because we set it um, equal to local. And if it's local, that means it's only going to be in the scope of this. Okay, so if it's local, it's not going to come out of that here. Okay, so see if I wanna, if I want to get the data here, it's going to be like, what the heck is that? Right. So if I want to do cache dot value. Um, even out here, it doesn't even know what data is because it, it was stuck inside this function. So how we get it out of that function is we just get rid of the local. All right, now it's not local, and now we can all see it. And now also, what people do often is is define data up here. Just I know it looks really weird because there's no equal sign or anything, but you're basically just putting the memory in the game, and you're basically saying local data. Um, 
Yeah, so if that makes sense. So go ahead and type that up here too and put local data, and that way it's local, but it actually saves, and then it'll come back out, right? That's that, that's, that's that's what you want. Because really, if, if you just did data, it would actually, you could be able to use it out here, and that just wastes a little bit of memory. Not much, but just, just for learning purposes, or just for... I don't know. I don't even know why I told you this, but you, you, know, you know now, okay? Anyways, so um, so now what we would do, right, is we would set our cash out value equal to we have, equal to what we have in our data, but we don't have any data yet. We need to actually save data to load data, okay? If you don't have any data, what data are you gonna load? Am I right? So um, all right. So now what we're gonna do is the most important part, which is save data. All right. Uh, here we go. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is. Um, save data so let me show you how to do it all right so um we don't want to save the data right when the player joins because why would we save the player's data right when he joins right so we actually want to get out of this little function right here we don't want to save it right when the player joins so let's get out of here um and go down here and what we're going to do is we're going to do game or actually no yeah we're going to do game dot players dot player removing so if the player starts leaving then we're going to save his data and we can also add auto save soon which i'll show you how to do um, but if the players are moving, then we're going to save his data. So we're going to do players dot game dot players dot player dot game dot players dot player removing connect function, and then we're going to do um, uh, what we need to do. Okay, so here we go. So here's how you save the data. Um, so basically, what you're going to want to do now is also get your player user ID. Um, we need to actually put player up here too because we need to find out what player is removing. So type player in here as parameter, and then we're going to do local. Actually, we can just copy this. So local player user ID equals that. So we have the same user ID. That way we load it to the same key and we're not loading for a different key. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, that's good. And then what we're going to do is how you save data. The function you use is um, my data store set async. That's so you see up here, it's get async. So it's like getting a sync it. And then it's here, it's setting a sync it. Okay, that sounds weird. Um, but yeah, that's what it's doing. And then it takes two parameters, which is the key. So like, what do you want to save it to? Which we want to save it to player user ID. And then what what do you what data you want to save? And we want to save data. All right. Now we have data right now. So what are, what do we want it to save? I'm gonna show you that right here in a second. So um, oh, okay, I, I, I'm I'm all over the place. I'm sorry, but okay. So then the second parameter is the data you want to save. Okay. Now what we want to save is we want to save uh, the cash, right? We want we want to save um, how much cash the player has. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do um, local data equals cash dot um, dot value, right? That's, that's that's what you got right there. And now you actually need to type the whole thing, which is going to be player dot leader stats dot cash dot value because we don't have the leader stats up here. But um, there you go. So yeah, local data is equal to player dot leader status dot cash dot value, right? And or you could just type that in right there, but maybe it makes it more simple right here, like with data, right? So local data we're saving it to is the basically we're going to get the number that our cash is equal to. So, okay, let's say we run our game, right? And um, I hope we might get some errors right now, but don't worry about it. Let's say we run our game, okay? And I go on my leader stats here and I get five cash, all right? Um, what this is doing is it's, it's, it's basically setting data equal to five, and then it's putting the data, um, and then it's saving the number five inside the data store, and that way when you access it later, right, you can set your cash dot value equal to data, which is five. Okay, hope that makes sense. So um, it actually, I don't think it's a work right now, um, but um, like I said earlier, we need to wrap it in a P call. I didn't put the P call in at first because it kind of looks confusing. So go ahead and type the P call in. Um, we're gonna go ahead and type the P call. So the whole success error message equals P call um, function. And then you're gonna go ahead and stick that bad boy in there. Um, and then you're gonna go ahead and do if success. So if the, the data saves successfully, Success. Oh, got it. That sounded like I said something else. Um, <laughs> and then we can just go ahead and print data successfully saved. Okay. So if it saves successfully, we'll let us all. We we can let each other know, and we can say woohoo, it's saved. And then um, we can actually do else. So if it didn't save, or if if there was an error message, so if it was nil, then we can do print. There was an error when saving data, or there was an error. Uh, there was a yeah okay there was an error okay <laughs> uh, there you go and then you can just warn of the error message and then it's gonna give you some kind of code and that code um, you can look on I'll have a link in the description below 
um, if there is an error, which it probably shouldn't be, but if there is one, there's like a list of codes that Roblox put out, and they all have a meaning, like one means something, one means another, blah, blah, blah. You don't need to worry about that right now. But just, just for future reference, you, this probably won't ever run right here, but if it does, then you'll have all the codes and stuff. So yeah, I'll put the link, I'll put the link in the description below. Don't worry about that right now, though. Don't worry about that right now. Okay, anyways, um, so now that we have that working. So now it's actually going to save our data. So if we leave, the, if we run this, it should work. Um, I hope I didn't mess up because that would suck, but let's go ahead and run the game and see if it works. So it actually went to save from last time already. Uh, no, it didn't. Okay. Okay. I know why I didn't save from last time. Don't worry about it. All right. Anyways, so we're in a game now, but we want to save our data. So we need to get some cash to save. Okay. Because we could save it at zero, but it's just going to assign it to zero again, but it'll be zero at default. So we want to go ahead and, and change our cash to something better, right? We want to we get 50 cash, something like that. Okay. So we can save it. But if we just change it to 50 right now, it's actually um, in our client, right? Because currently you see up here it says current is client. If you guys know how filtering enable works, um, basically if you're in the client, it's not going to actually save. It only saves in the client. So what we need to do is actually hit this little button up here and go into our server. And now if, if something saves in, or now if we actually do something in here, like change the cache, it's going to save in the server and it's going to save in the data store. So yeah. You need to make sure you, if you're if you're changing a value like in the workspace or explorer like that, always do it in the server unless you don't want it to be like permanent or unless you want it. I don't know, but you know, you know what I'm saying, right? So if you want us to actually show everywhere and not just on this guy's screen right here, then we need to actually do it in the um, in the in the server. Okay, so let's go ahead and go ahead and go up there, and click that button, and then go find our players, and then you, and then leader stats, and then cash, and then go ahead and change it to whatever you want. Okay, I'll switch up. Um, we'll make it 50. All right. And now we'll go back to our client, and as you can see up there, it says 50. Awesome, perfect, that's what we want. And now let's go ahead and leave the game, and it should save. Uh, here we go, and boom, it even said it. Data successfully saved, awesome. All right, now it's saved. Let's go ahead and see if it worked. So let's hit play again, and come on, baby, come on, come on. And boom, we have 50 cash. Um, round of applause yourself, guys, seriously. That is how you do data stores, that's how they work. Now, um, this was a long tutorial. I apologize how for how long it was, but I was in depth and I wanted to make sure it was as clear as possible. And I hope this cleared it up for you if you're getting confusion or if you're learning it for the first time. Hope you can understand it perfectly. Um, now, listen. Whenever I learned data stores, I was like, well, you know what? I also have wins, right? Like, okay, like, like I mean, let me let me go ahead and copy this. Let's say my game, right? I, I had cash in my game, right? But I also had. Um, I also had like wins, okay, let me just change that real quick. But okay, so I had cash in my game, right? But I also had um, like the wins up here, right? I wanted to save my wins too. So how do I do that? I didn't know how to do that, right? I was like, well, what the heck do I do? I don't know how to save my wins. I only know how to save cash, right? So um, I looked at my script and I was like, okay, so the data is equal to player.leaderstats.cash.value. Okay, and I was like, what the heck? Okay, I'm stupid. I don't know how to do this. Um, anyways, I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So I'll show you how to save multiple data. And you probably might be able to understand. Um, maybe I was just dumb, but use a table, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write it out for you just so, just so it's clear. But yeah, you're going to have to use a table for that. So what we're going to do now is actually do that. So now we have win. So go ahead and type this out if you want. Um, this right here and uh, you want to have wins in your data and your leader status too and then we can save the wins too just not just the cash because right now if we were to um, you know if you were to go into our server and change the wins right it's not gonna save because it's not saving in our data store um, like let's see we have 50 wins but we're gonna stop it and then we'll go back and it's not gonna save so um, yeah. Also, this is gonna this is gonna work in your game too. So if you want to go ahead and load a server and uh, see if it works, you you can try it. It, it will work. Trust me. Um, it's like the same thing. But anyways, um, so yeah. See, our wins are not safe. So now what we need to do is actually save them. All right. So how we do that? Um, oh, also I probably should show you the auto saving too, but this tutorial is getting really long, so I don't know. Um, but anyways, so I'll just show you how to do the um, the. I'll show you. Yeah, I'll just show you how to do the um sorry the date the table saves and then you can probably figure out auto saving yourself auto saves you just kind of put it on a on a for or on a while loop um you spawn it in another thread and then you um and, and then you have you know you just save it every once in a while so yeah anyways all right so um what we're gonna do now is save it in a table so how do we do that so what you actually want to do is when you're saving data what you want to do is don't just save like the data you see okay 
our data right now is just a variable. It's called data, and we're saving one number, and the number is cash, or the cash value, which which our well, ours was 50, right? So that's all we're doing. What we need to actually do is save it into a table. So we're going to do local data, and then we're going to put a little table there, and then we're going to do um, our first value we want to save is um, cash. Okay, so we're going to do cash local data. Put a table. Cash equals player dot leader stats dot cash dot value. Okay, so now perfect. Or I said perfect. Perfect. We're saving the cash. So now. Um, we still have our data right here. It would still save right the same way. Okay, as you can see, we would still save our data the same way. You just put your data um, table, and then you set it as sync, and then you put it in data, right? But actually, um, you would load it a different way. You can't just do um, cash dot value equals data because the data um, is a table, and it's gonna not, it doesn't know what it's. You know what I'm saying? So you can't do cash dot value equals data. What you need to do is data or cash dot value equals um, Data dot cash. All right. So this might be a little confusing because this actually is a table, and then you're, you're accidentally thing. But uh, I, I'm sorry, I can't talk. But you see what I'm saying, right? You're gonna do data um, equals um, this, right? So you have cash, and then we can copy this over and do wins too. I'll go ahead and do wins. Um, wins. Uh, here we go. Uh, so now we're gonna save wins and cash. All right. And now you still save the table. Right, but you load it differently. So how you load it is you have our data. So you get our data up here. We set it. We get it to sync, and then we do cash dot value. Okay, so our cash dot value, and then we do equals data, right? Data dot cash. Okay, so you have data, and then you have cash, and then you just do wins dot value equals data dot wins. So data dot wins. That's it. It's that simple. Now, for some reason, it took me seven and a half years to learn that. But for you, hopefully, you can learn it today, uh, or hopefully, you did learn it just now. Anyway, so now if we actually go into our game and oh, we got an error. Um, what the heck? What, what am I doing wrong? Um, uh, attempt to index local. Wait, 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 wait. Attempt to index local data a number value. Okay, um, what the heck? Um, I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. I don't understand what's the issue here, um, but I'm gonna ignore it. So, yep, see you later. All right, um, listen, I think that's just a little uh, error because like the first data store save, but go ahead and just, I'm gonna go ahead and just go to my server and, um, and save my data. So I'll go ahead and do 50, um, 50, and then we go in here and we have it there. Now we'll go ahead and exit out of it, and then it is actually saved. Perfect, it did save. And let's load it back up and see if it works. And here we go. And there we go, it works. See, perfect. So yeah, that, that first error was because it was looking for data that it didn't have. So yeah, that's kind of an issue on my part. Um, I'm pretty sure how you fix that is you just do if, um, what you do is you would do if data then, and then you would just you know put that right there. Um, so yeah, or yeah, okay. So yeah, I hope it makes sense to you guys. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. That's pretty much it. Uh, you know, you know how to save two values, and now obviously you can do as much as you want. If you want to save more than one value, what if you have you have um, XP too, right? You just obviously change it, and then you know you know what to do. Okay. Um, anyways, hope this taught you guys something. Make sure to subscribe if you're new if you haven't already. And um, yeah, um, new tutorials coming soon, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one, which will be animations probably. Yeah. All right, peace, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and hope you learned something. Hope. Uh, okay, I'm gonna stop talking.